Your doctor has recommended that you undergo laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. But what does that actually mean? Gastric bypass is a surgical procedure used to help a patient lose weight. It is usually recommended to help those who are morbidly obese, meaning that their weight problem has become a serious health risk. Most severely overweight patients overeat. Food enters the body through the mouth, travels down the esophagus, where it collects in the stomach. From there, digestive food passes into the small intestine. Nutrients taken from the food pass from the small intestine into the bloodstream. Waste travels to the colon and leaves the body through the anus. The amount of food that a person eats is partly controlled by appetite. The stomach plays an important role in controlling appetite. When the stomach is empty, a person feels the urge to eat. When the stomach is full, that urge goes away. Gastric bypass dramatically reduces the size of the stomach. With a smaller stomach, the patient is physically unable to eat large amounts of food. Gastric bypass also shortens the small intestine so that the body absorbs less of the food eaten. With less food entering the body, fat stores begin to be used. The patient loses weight. Surgical procedures performed by making an incision large enough to expose the entire operative area are called open procedures. Your doctor believes that your medical condition and overall state of health make you a good candidate for a less intrusive laparoscopic surgery. A laparoscope is a narrow tube that contains a light source and a small video camera. Using a laparoscope, the surgeon is able to operate by making one or more very small incisions through which the sterile laparoscope and possibly other instruments are inserted into the body. Using the laparoscope's video camera, the surgeon is able to explore and inspect the interior of the abdomen, often allowing the surgeon to see with greater detail and with more clarity than with the human eye alone. However, it is important to understand that during the procedure, your surgical team is always prepared to convert a laparoscopic procedure to an open procedure, should they feel that your condition requires a more direct approach. If the surgical team makes this decision, you will find upon waking up that your doctor has made a larger incision and that healing may proceed more slowly. Converting to an open procedure will affect the length of your recovery and will probably require hospitalization. Of course, no surgery is completely risk-free, but your physician believes that if you decide not to undergo the recommended procedure, you may be putting your health at risk. Then, when you are asleep, the surgical team will make an incision just above the navel. A tube-shaped collar, called a trocar, will be placed inside the incision to hold it open. Harmless carbon dioxide gas will be used to inflate the abdomen, serving to enlarge the work area and to separate the organs. The team then inserts the laparoscope. Once in place, the laparoscope will provide video images that allow the surgeon to see the inside of your abdomen. Next, the team makes four more incisions, taking special care to keep the openings as small as possible. These openings will provide access for other surgical instruments. Using these instruments, your doctor will then cut the upper portion of the stomach from the rest of the organ. This upper portion forms a small pouch which is sealed with a stapling tool. The opening in the larger portion of the stomach is closed with staples. The next step is to divide the small intestine.
The main part of the intestine is pulled upward behind the colon and positioned near the small upper stomach pouch. The other free end of the intestine is surgically stitched to the side of intestinal loop. The other end is now attached to the small stomach pouch. A new route for food passing from the esophagus into the intestines has now been created. Finally, your doctor will check to make sure that all the new connections are secure and that there are no leaks. A drain is added to remove any excess fluids and the carbon dioxide is allowed to escape. Then the team withdraws all surgical instruments and the incisions are closed with sutures or staples. Finally, a sterile dressing is applied.